what up? I'm back at you. It's me again, Mike Cardi. We about to get. <laughs> Remind the world who we are. Jackpot. Mother, what do we take? Everything. The category is royalty. <laughs> Junkies. I want to be a star. You ever consider joining a house? What do you mean? Well, a house is a family you get to choose. I have bigger dreams of performing at some ball. I have nowhere else to go. Come here. It's that white boy again. Is this your first time doing something like this? Whispering love. Yes. What exactly is a ball? Balls are a gathering of people who are not welcome to gather anywhere else. Darling, the champagne is burnt. This is what it's like to be a person at the top of the rainbow room. What's better, the dream or the reality? The reality. What do you want out of life? I want to be treated like any other woman. That's my dream. One, six, seven, eight, one. Baby, you are our secret weapon. <laughs> Yo, what up? I'm back. Yes, we about to get all the way up into Pose. Yes, season one, episode one. Yes, the dang on series is so damn good. To me, it is. The S got picked up for a second damn season already. Yes, Ryan Murphy has brought the ballroom scene to the damn mainstream on FX channel on Sundays at 9 o'clock. And I couldn't be more happier to watch this series. Um, No, it is not a part of my coming up a uh, gay story or anything like that you know it is one small percentage of the gay world and just note that this whole series is based on the 1987 ballroom scene up in new york you know it's different gays all over the planet and each one of us have our own culture in different regions and stuff so this is the new york city region no i'm not part of a house or anything like that. Do I like the ballroom scene, theatrics and drama and all that stuff that goes with the voguing and the runway walking? Yes, I do. It's the, it's the tea to me. I, I like it. Um, for me, I just like to see people dancing and stuff. So that's why I get all the way into it. Do I want to be up all night uh, till 6, 7 in the morning waiting on the ball to finish be judging? Hell the fuck. No, I don't. And I'm not knocking nobody that does it, but, hey, that's just not my thing. But I like to watch the shit for a little bit, okay? Um, but, boom, let's uh, say this right here. Like, I mean, it's a lot of great things in this whole series. I think they bring a lot of great topics to the light. Um, some people are upset because they feel like that it's the same gay storyline um, of the father kicking the child out the house you know the parents kicking the child out the house the child having to fend for themselves and, and and make a way for themselves out in the world or whatever and then some people are upset because of the you know the hiv stigma that's attached with being homosexual and stuff like i say we got a lot of topics that we're going to talk about but let me get y'all through this thing on episode right so let's get all the way into it we got the first thing we got the damn legendary house of abundance and you got mother abundance who's pretty much staying on you know she's reading the girls down and stuff and she's trying to figure out what are they going to be walking for the next theme in the ball so you got blanca who's one of the transgender uh children and she pretty much throws out we should all walk together as royalty so they undermined her thoughts, and then two seconds later, Mother Abundance is like, oh, I got it. Let's all walk royalty, royalty in the ball tonight. So right then and there, they're undermining Blanca and what she's bringing to the table. So at this point, she feels slighted. So as they're trying to figure out what they're going to wear, Mother has the uh, idea and takes the girls down to the museum. And the museum has a display of royalty wear, and they go there 10 minutes before closing, and the security guard lets them know that it's about to close, but they don't care because they about to go in there and they ain't going to scope the place out. Right before um, the lights shut out and they announce the closing time, everybody goes to go high, and then boom, 
As soon as they dang gonna cut the lights out, they gonna steal all the dang gonna um attire that's on the mannequins and they go try and run out the damn building. Little did they know that the damn doors and shit was already locked and the alarm was set. So what did the girls do? They damn bust out the window with a bench that was in the lobby and they runs down the damn street. They go hurry up and throw them damn clothes and shit on. So I'm like, boom, bitch, wet, bitch, wet. That ain't no damn shit that I be motherfucking doing. Maybe that's the culture for a lot of these people that be walking the balls and stuff or whatever. But for me, that's not it. That ain't no shit that I'd have been doing way back then. I'm not about to be getting no record to go walking no damn ball for damn 60 seconds. But I know people that do go stunt craft and shit like that. Craft up fake shit. Oh, they can damn get some attire to walk on the damn ball. So, you know, it's it's... According to how you want to live life. You do you want to live life on the edge or not? But for me, that wasn't a part of my story. And that ain't some shit that I did or ever cared to do. But I don't want people to think that that is what all gay people do. Because it's not. There's a lot of dang on hard working gay people that pay for their dang on outfits for the balls and shit. From a damn hard working 9 to 5 or 7 to 7 or 8 to 8 job or whatever the hell they got. Okay? So let's not even think that that's part of the entire, you know what I'm saying, culture that all gay people do that because that would be a bold-faced motherfucking lie. Anywho, let's move right along. They get to the dang on ballroom scene and they trying to rush and get these clothes on. Meanwhile, the cops is like, I know where they at already. So they trying to singe they self up. They ain't gonna pray tell who was the father of the boy. He pretty much announces the house of abundance after they done damn shunned off the last uh, house because they won't look in the damn part. House of Abundance rolls out there and straight royalty realness, okay? And they serving the girls all the way the fuck up. And I was like, yes, ma'am. Yes, the fuck, ma'am. Go ahead, do your damn thing. The girls out there, they walking. They just giving and they giving and um. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, bitch, go ahead, okay? So... Mother comes out or whatever. She's strutting her stuff down the runway. As she turns around, does her little turn. She sees the cops. And she's like, oh, shit. Then this bitch picks her shit up. She's just like, mm-mm. We walking and we still in the bull. And we all gonna follow behind mother. And all gonna get hand to fuck cuff together. I was like, bitch, where? This is what y'all girls do all for a bull. And like I say, pray tell was like... That is how you do a ball. So that's how the old first thing starts. Like, I'm like, oh shit. This some old shit right here. I'm glad y'all letting the real tease out of how the girls be going out here doing way back when and some to this current motherfucking day. Anywho, next thing we got dang going on. Damon, he's pretty much a dancer. He lives in Allentown, PA, and he's pretty much. Um, Aspiring to be a ballet dancer and stuff and trying to make it out in the real world. Well, he's at dance class and everything. Class is over. He gets on the bus, goes home. He puts on his music and everything. They got the best house music. I forgot what song was playing, but they, they music is the shit in this whole damn thing. And uh, I don't know if his father heard the music way down the street, but he comes darting in the damn house on um, out of the car. And he just kind of like, you know, what the hell is you doing with this music playing? And, and I, my homie seen you damn skipping up out of that dance class downtown. Like, what kind of son uh, shit is that? Like, you supposed to be a young man or whatever. So at this point, he's like, Dad, I'm I'm a, I'm a dancer and I'm gay. And and, and, the, and the dad is like, oh, like hell your ass is. So he dang gonna start whooping his son's ass and everything, denouncing him and stuff. You know, the mother ends up uh, hearing them upstairs. And she, because uh, she was out walking from the grocery store, pretty much dang gone. She comes up there and just starts jumping down the boy's throat and stuff too. And I'm like, you know what? Bitch. Both of y'all asses is wrong as fuck or whatever. And it's that right there is the reason why, you know, gays are feel shunned in the dang on black families or whatever. Y'all like to damn push our ass and shit in the damn closet. But it's 2018 and we ain't having that shit. But way back then, like I say, gayness was taboo in the black family. And they didn't want no parts of it. And they tried to do every damn thing to, to dang on make sure you was not a part of the existence. And... 
Like I say, it's the times this motherfucking changed, and that damn mother or whatever, I would have thought that she was going to come up there with a whole nother damn type of perspective, but she came up there talking the same shit. Then the father damn throws his ass outside on the ground and was like, you're dead to me. The mother's like, you need to go to church and repent, and you get to pray that stuff out and ask God for forgiveness. And I'm like, bitch, you can't pray the motherfucking gay away. I wish y'all motherfuckers would stop that shit, talking about you can pray the gay away, all that, this shit is not no Andrew Caldwell, the Church of God in Christ and shit. So my, I ain't gay no more. I'm fucking delivered, bitch, or whatever. Um, and you gay, you gay. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Now, can you dang on like women and, and go forth to dang on like women in the future? Yeah, it's possible, but if it is that type of situation, you shouldn't have to dang on promote yourself. But in the black lifestyle, in the black families, once you announce that you gay, you forever gay. Or what not. So, but he ain't trying to damn hide that shit. Damn Damon. So, you know, they pretty much kick his ass out with a bag and everything. And he's out on his own having to fend for himself. And like I say, it's just that very type of behavior and actions from parents that promote the DL lifestyle. That's the why, reason why um, black guys are so on the DL. Because it's so not talked about in our community. So, boom. It's just one of them things. So, we get on, um, you know, so he's done moved his way all the way to New York. We get to the next scene with damn, um, damn Blanca. She's at the health clinic trying to find out her results of HIV. She finds out that she's positive and stuff. She's, you know, she kind of already knew, so she's not shocked. She goes over to, uh, Pray Tell, who is the father, who is the, um, other ballroom scene, and also a dancer, and he's a good friend, and pretty much telling her, like, bitch, like, you knew, already knew what the results was going to be. I don't know why you wouldn't got that test done. You need to continue living life and everything. And I'm just like, you know, that's the wrong message, you know, to portray and to be putting out on TV now. But this is back in 1987. I'm saying this right now. It's 2018. Like, you need to be going to go get tested at least twice a year, you know. And, and that way you can make sure that you are good and always use condoms and stuff. Um... But he's right, you know, if you are diagnosed with that dang on virus, you know, please make sure that you are still continuing to live life to the fullest. We don't have time um, for you all to be out here committing suicide and doing crazy stuff or doing vindictive stuff to people. Or, you know, giving the HIV virus to other people purposely and stuff like some people tend to do. Just take care of yourself and just continue to dang on live life to the motherfucking fullest. Period. So, boom. Uh, that's my little spiel right there. So she continues on with her life and she's like, okay, yeah, you're right. I'm going to go get me an apartment. So she finds an apartment, gets that, goes back to the house. Mother reads her the fuck down. It's like, girl, I've been seeing your ass. The girls, the streets is talking. Honey, you've been around here looking for apartments and all that. You've been out here, dang, going to look up for furniture. And uh, what the fuck is you trying to do? Leave the house? And she's just like, yeah, shit. You undermine the shit out of me here, and I want to be able to pass on my legacy to other people or whatever. Especially since she feels like that she has a story to tell now, that she can be a mother to other people. And I don't think that she's really feeling the love from Mother Abundance. So she leaves or whatnot, you know. Uh, the next day, pretty much, she sees Damon out on the streets dancing and stuff in the streets of New York. Tips him and pretty much asks him, does he know anything about a ball? And does he know anything about houses and stuff? And she explains that a house, uh, what a house is, and that she's a new mother. And, um, you know, she offers him a place to stay. So, which is actually a nice gesture because, you know, he just got kicked out on his ass by his biological parents. And um, they need to go to fuck the hell. And, you know, um, she pretty much scoops him up under her wing and takes him out to the ball to show him the life and... And he's just like, wow, you know what I'm saying? This is out here, you know, it's this many gay people and, you know, this is what this is what my life could be or whatever. And, um, but he's still at the same time a little bit apprehensive about the situation. So she takes him out to eat and all that, talk to him more about the ball and, and talk to him about his dreams and aspirations and stuff. And, um, you know, they kind of part ways after she writes uh, her address on a sugar packet and stuff. Well... Boom. Dang on. Uh, next scene. Damn. We got Stan Bo. He's pretty much at the um, 
Trump Towers, and he's he's a new, he's a white guy. He's trying to get him a, a job at Trump Towers to be an executive and stuff. And um, pretty much, he's meeting with the guy, and the guy's pretty much like, you know, you got the job, you here. Donald wouldn't have brought you all the way here if you didn't have, you know, the skill sets and stuff. So, you know, what do you want out of this whole situation? Now, meanwhile, while Stan is telling him, you know, all these things, the guy goes over to the table, starts snorting lines of coke and all that because this is like the, this is what was the end thing at that point in time. You know, coke was new and the happening thing on the street, especially for rich people. So he begins to tell him that, you know, I want to have the best life. I want to be going on trips. I want to basically live like you. I want to be able to eat the finest uh, dinners and things, go to ball. I want to be able to do the work. So, you know, he lets him know that he has a job. So Stan is, you know, feeling happy. He goes out to the whole stroll. That's where he ends up seeing the dang on holes on the, on the point or whatever. Well, it's all the transgenders. They out there and stuff. And, um... Pretty much Angel, she walks up to the car and it's kind of like, um, I'm tired of seeing your ass window shop. You've been coming by here the past few weeks. Like, what the fuck is the deal? <coughs> Excuse me. What the fuck is the deal? So, at this point, you know, he's kind of like, you know, I don't know really what I want. She's like, you know, are you a cop or whatever? He's like, no, I'm not a cop, you know. She's like, you know, can I get in? So, he's like, yeah, takes her back to a hotel, nice-ass hotel or whatever. And, um, you know, he's a little bit nervous because this is his first time being with a hoe or whatnot. She's like, wow, this is nice as hell because I'm used to just getting fucked down in the back seat, you know. This shit is new to me right here. You know, thank you very, very much, okay? So, um, dang on, um, Stan, he's a little bit apprehensive. He cuts on the dang on music. And, um, he's just like, girl, take off, uh, take off your skirt. And so, Angel, she's kind of like, you know, doing her little sexy thing, you know, and then she's got her panties on, and he's like, you know, take off your panties. Now, I'm not sure if that he knew that she was a transgender and all, because I will say this right here, Miss Angel can pass for real fish, okay? Um, dang, I'm not sure, um... If she dang on, uh, if he knew that she was a transgender, but, you know, she pulled out the big dick on him. And, 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 and by uh, that point, I think he was a little bit intimidated because they didn't even have sex. He just asked her to sit on the bed and dang gone uh, talk. But I think he was more so fascinated with the fact that he thought that it was a woman, but it was really a man or whatever. And so he wanted to know more about her. So drops her off and all that. And, um... That whole situation is done. He goes back home to his wife and kids and stuff. And um, he pretty much begins to scrub his damn mouth out before he goes and gets in the bed with his wife. Because he's still got Angel on his breath. Okay, so boom. Anywho, uh, next thing, damn Damon is at the park. He's uh, sleeping on the bench. And he wakes up and realizes that his damn bag is gone. So at this point in time... He ain't got no damn where to go or whatever. So all he got is a sugar packet and the clothes on his back. So he goes over to Angel's apartment and pretty much, um, not Angel, but Blanca's apartment. Um, because she offered to be the mother and um, pretty much asked could he be a part of the house and stuff. So she's like, okay, yeah, you got rules uh, and stuff. And um, definitely you need to make sure... Um, you you abide by each one of these dang on rules because I'm not going to have you just up in my house, you know what I'm saying, running around these dang on streets. So, boom. Next day, dang on, um, Angel goes over to Trump Towers because she sees the ad in the paper. She's trying to apply for a job up in a little uh, retail shop and stuff. Well, she goes up there, you know, she has her outfit on. She wasn't looking the most professional and stuff. Well, anywho, the um, manager's like, you know, no, after she looks at the resume and she looks at the license and then she looks at Angel, she's like, okay, the license, the resume name, and the face is all not matching together because at this point in time, she hasn't got her full transition on and she still is probably going up under her man name. So back in that time and age, hell, that was, def that was definitely um, taboo and, and, and she was probably looking like a freak to that lady at that point in time. So... At this point, she's a little bit disappointed. She dang gone, um, go 
goes downstairs. She's smoking a cigarette. Meanwhile, Stan pulls up with his boss getting out of the car about to walk into Trump Towers. And um, he's just like, you know, you can't be here right now. You know what I'm saying? You need to dang on. Um, you need to get out of here, pretty much. So Angel's like, what the hell? Like, we just had this long, intimate conversation last night. And here you go trying to damn boot my ass up out the situation. So, anywho, um... Angel, you know, she gets, uh, she goes to the ball that night. Meanwhile, Blanca is there. Everybody's there because it's a nightly thing. And, um, Angel decides that she's going to walk in the category, um, that pretty much was not pertaining to her. I think it was, uh, ballroom gowns that she pretty much had on a street walker dress. So she goes out there because she done got pissy drunk. She wants to feel empowered and stuff because that's what the ball does. The ball empowers people to... To feel their best and all that. So they get judged by everybody. Well, honey, they read her ass down so bad and clowned the shit out of her and shaded her. It was so dang on bad. And she had to run the hell up out the damn building. It just goes to show in the gay community, nobody is fucking exempt from the fucking read. Let me just tell you, nobody is exempt from the read. So at this point in time... Blanca runs after her and is just kind of like, you know, girl, you knew they was going to shade your ass the hell out going out there looking like that. So, dang, um, Angel at this point in time is kind of like, you know, girl, you know, can I join your house, you know? And she's like, yeah, sure. So, at this point in time, uh, Blanca's house is kind of uh, shaping up, you know, and, and, and she's starting to get new members and everything like that. Um, so, boom. You got Angel, Damon, and Blanca. They at the house. And they pretty much filling out a dance application that um, Damon had got from the school of dance. Um, that um, Blanca had took him to. And, you know, Blanca lays down the law. And like, these are some mother's rules. You know what I'm saying? You're going to walk all the balls. You're going to make sure that you get an education. You're going to get a regular STD testing. Because I don't need y'all uneducated. And I don't need y'all you know, uh, walking around here, you know, as a walking case, basically. And, um, so she decides that they're going to walk the ball the very next night or, like, two nights from then, like, the Friday or something. And, um, Blanca's like, you know, we got to go get ready. So they take the, uh, girls over to Pray Tell, which is the stylist, which is the ballroom host, and he's spitting them up for their outfits and everything. And, um... You know, pretty much, he, he's the one who has all the design expertise. And so, I mean, he came together with some cute little stuff. It was cute for back then. But, like I said, he's he's pretty much the one that is encouraging the whole situation. And so, boom, let's move right along. Thank um, uh, Damon ends up uh, going out with Pray Tell and Blanca and them to the streets that night, which is where all the girls go bogue and stuff on the street, and they get their practice out there in the different houses battle, they get to call each other out and stuff without the actual official judges and things like that. So, um, pretty much it's like, um, and if you ever seen Vogue, Vogue is like a form of break dance and whatever, but it's like, you know, it's all about lines and it's all about, you know, the hands and telling the story with it and stuff. So, that's the, um, Pretty much what Pray Tell was letting uh, Damon in on is the fact that he let him know this is the battle and this is what the girls are out here for. Like they they telling the story with their hands and, and the only way that you're able to gain recognition in the house is whenever you start challenging different people in certain houses and stuff. So boom. So Damon right there, he's instantly intrigued. Boom, let's move along. Stan is at the dang on ball. Um, with his uh, wife and uh, he's enjoying his new life and stuff or it seems to be in, uh, she seems to be enjoying it more than he is because all he can really think about is Angel at this point and um, pretty much they uh, have like a nice little happy anniversary mm -hmm. evening and you know they share the kiss and stuff at this point in time he's daydreaming about Angel thinks that he sees her over there dancing with another man but really it's just somebody else like I say, he done got intrigued and he head over heels for this girl. He's truly not happy in his dang on marriage at this point in time. So, boom, let's move right along. Dang on. They at the ball and um, they're serving uh, military realness that night and all that. And they done brought out their best attire and stuff. And um, it actually was um, a pretty good little walk off and stuff. So, 
Dangon Blanca goes over to Pray Tell where she's pretty much telling him that she wants to have a challenge. And, um, you know, Pray Tell's kind of like, okay, what's the name of your house? And she pretty much says that her house name is the House of Evangelista that is pretty much based off of Lindy Evangelista that was an upcoming supermodel at that point in time. And they wanted to challenge the House of Abundance, you know, because they are the it. They are the it house. So I'm like, yes, okay, go ahead and put yourself up there. So she feels like that she got the secret weapon, weapon with Damon on the team. And um, they pretty much go out there and they battle. And they go put up, they go put up. And they didn't do too bad or whatever. You know, they get like, they got like, what, two tens and like three nines. And then the House of Abundance got tens across the board. So it ended up being a pretty good battle. You know, they was a little bit upset. Go outside. And, um, like I say, it was a little bit disappointing. It was a heartbreaking thing at that moment they lost their first battle. But, like I say, uh, a guy comes out there by the name of Poppy. He's like, hey, y'all are really dope. I'm trying to join y'all's house. You know, and at the same time, pray tell, reading the girls down, like, you know, y'all look horrible out there. But by him coming up like this, talking about he wants to be a part of this, this is the reason why you, you started this whole thing, um, Blanco. So don't you stop. There's many a dang on people out here that, that's homeless, that's gay, that really need somebody to step up and be a, a good parent to them. So you doing the right damn thing, girl. So boom, let's move right along. Um, of course, Blanco um, mandates mandatory Monday practice. So let's move along. Dang on um, Blanca, she pretty much um, goes over to the school of dance because I don't even know if I put this in here, but Damon, he missed the deadline. And she pretty much goes to the school of dance um, president and it's just like, you know, you need to get this uh, little boy a chance and everything. And the little boy, uh, he's a good kid and he just wants to dance. So just give him a shot. And um, she gives the whole backstory of how he's been kicked out and everything. Like I say, the dance teacher gives him three minutes of time. Um, dang on Blanca had him an outfit and all that stuff. Had some Whitney Houston. I just want to dance. I was like, yes, come on now. He put together a real nice performance and stuff. At the end of the performance, um, well, during the performance, you could tell he wasn't being his true self. So he regrouped. And then once he pulled it all together, he was giving realness. And like I say, the president, she enjoyed every bit of the dang on dance. Comes over and gives him a hug at the end. And that was that. Like I say, he ends up getting into the school. Like I say. And uh, that was pretty much the first episode. We're going to get more into this dang on pose thing. It's a lot of topics that we got to talk about. I'll probably uh, post a separate video about the different things that I want to kind of get into or maybe go live. But like I say, y'all stay taking care of yourselves. I love you all. I love you all. All right. Bye. <laughs>